Hey everyone, welcome to Adventures in Everyday Cooking, where every day can be an adventure in your kitchen. My name is Heather, and today is another 12 skills for the home cook. Now, I have been wanting to learn how to spatchcock a chicken for a really long time, um, but it kind of sounds a little intimidating to actually do it. But I watched a few videos and you guys, I don't know what I was thinking. I think that this is actually um, a pretty easy skill to learn and it's a very important skill that us home cooks have because I don't know how many times I've been in the grocery store and I've seen a whole chicken on sale and I don't really want to buy it because I don't know what to do with it. I mean, now that I have a rotisserie, that's a pretty easy one, but taking apart a whole chicken or even getting a whole chicken cooked and ready for dinner seems like an undertaking because chicken takes a long time to roast. But when you spatchcock it, it cuts the time in half and you still get the most awesome chicken ever, at least so I've been told. I've never actually made one and that's why we're doing this as a skill that the home cook should know because it will really open up a whole bunch of possibilities for you in the grocery store when you see those whole chickens on sale because believe it or not, not a lot of people take advantage of the cheapness that a whole chicken can give you in your budget. So I'm hoping that this is one of those skills that maybe you've never tried, but thought about trying, but either way, never done it before. So I thought well, this would be a great skill for us to stuff into our 12 skills for the home cook. So are you ready for this adventure? I know that I am. Let's get started. All right, what we're gonna need to spatchcock this chicken is one chicken and a pair of very sharp scissors. Now I'm gonna use Pampered Chef's kitchen shears. They are super sharp. It's very important you use super sharp scissors because we are going to be cutting through bone. So make sure that whatever scissors you use um, cut through bone, just try not to cut yourself with them. So this is our beautiful chicken here. Um, if you are a vegetarian, you may not want to watch this video, but those of us who like meat, you know, this is for us. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do with our chicken is we're gonna check and see if there's any giblets inside. Ooh, and there are. So I have part of a neck. Oh, yep. Okay, so my giblets are not in a bag in this one. Um, definitely save those. Um, save those for stock. Um, later, if you make chicken stock, which is really delicious, um, definitely save those for later because they will, um, you know, flavor your stock really well. And if you like giblet gravy, you know, there you go. I am not a fan of giblet gravy. My grandmother is, hi grandma, um, but I am not. So I will probably toss those. Okay, so when you're looking at this chicken, here's some things that I saw that we need to make sure to do. We need to recognize where all of the pieces are so we don't cut in the wrong spot. So if you're looking at the chicken like this, this part here, so the wings are kind of flapping this direction, this part here is the breast. So that's where you're gonna find the breast meat. Then you have, of course, the wings and the legs and the thighs back here. So what we're gonna wanna do is we're gonna want to turn it so it's breast down. So now, if you open the wings, you should have see the back and shoulders of this chicken like this. And your legs are kind of sticking out here. Be sure to have paper towels around if you don't like touching raw meat because they'll save your sanity or at least they will mine. So I'm gonna dry it off just a little bit. And you'll notice I am on a plastic cutting board. It kind of weirds me out to do chicken on a uh, wooden cutting board because I know the wood retains some of those uh, bacterial like spores or whatever. I don't know, maybe that's an old wives tale, whatever. So, <laughs> so here we have the butt of the chicken. Now there's a little piece back here. There's actually a technical name for the, the thing, the tail back here, but I don't remember what it's called. I'll put it on the screen right here. Um, but this part right here is where, this is wh where we're gonna orient ourselves. So this is the backbone of the chicken. So I guess what we're supposed to do is take a hold of this piece. So we're gonna take our scissors and we are going to just start to cut right beside that backbone. And do you see that? My scissors just cut right through that. And you're gonna hear, unfortunately, the crunch of bones and things. But if you have a good pair of scissors, it should just cut right through. And if you want the link to these scissors, I will leave them 
in my in the info of this video, but you just need a good pair of scissors. So I have cut all the way through next to this piece right here. All right, and then we're gonna do the same thing on the other side. So we're just gonna hold on to this and we're just gonna cut all the way up. This is something I definitely think that everybody needs to know, but it is not for the faint of heart. Oh my goodness. Okay, look at that. We have the backbone out. Now be sure to save this backbone because again, it can go in stock. It will taste delicious later. Then you just throw it away, you know, kind of thing. All right, so here we have it all open. And as you can see, there's no backbone. So we are just about done with spatchcocking already. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna turn it back over like this. We're gonna spread it out just a little bit. And then everybody cover your ears because everything that I saw, there's a loud crunch when you're gonna press on the middle of the breasts of this bird. So hopefully, I, I say hopefully that, that Mike will pick it up, but actually I'm kind of hoping it doesn't because it's, huh, it's gross. So here we go. I'm gonna cry in, in laughter because this is so disgusting, but it's something that we need to know how to do. So here we go. Okay, we're gonna push down. <laughs> and then we're gonna spread this out just a little bit. Oh. Do you hear that? Yep. Okay. And apparently if it looks like a heart, do you see this? See the heart and the legs are open like that? We have properly spatchcocked this chicken. Ugh. So let's turn it over so you can see on the other side. So as you can see here, we have, you know, everything's cracked open. It's as open as it can get. Um, if there's any of the giblets that still remain, you'll want to trim those off. I'm so sorry for those of you who are faint at heart. I'm struggling as well, but I know, I know that this is, this is something that I have been wanting to do and I know it's a skill I need to have because being able to roast a whole chicken in the oven in half the time is a pretty big deal. So as long as I think, and I'm going to trim off some of the fat over here too, just cause I don't really need it. So, and now comes the seasoning part. So um, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna roast this today so that you can see how beautiful it turns out. It's great on a platter. It's great for serving to your guests, like all spatchcocked and everything. And I'm gonna show you exactly how to do that. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and get my hands washed and get this put away into a freezer bag in my freezer for when I wanna make stock. Um, and then we're gonna go ahead and season this and get it into the oven. All right, I've taken care of that, um, the extra bits, um, and now we're gonna go ahead and season. So what you want to do is go ahead and keep it open the way that it was open before, and then you're gonna use some kind of oil to brush all over it. I'm gonna go ahead and use butter because we love butter on our chicken. And just remember that once you dip your brush into your butter, after touching your chicken, that butter is no longer any good. So you might want to pour your butter on and then brush it around, but I'm pretty confident that we're gonna use most of this butter on this chicken because we really do like butter seasoning with our seasoning, like that butter flavor with our seasoning. And I really feel like the butter helps it brown a little better. That might be in my brain, but you never know. But we're gonna paint it everywhere. Just make sure that there is butter everywhere on our chicken. And then we're gonna take the seasoning of our choice and we are going to season it everywhere. So I'm gonna use the lemon garlic seasoning from Pampered Chef. Um, I just discovered it within the last couple of weeks after doing that taste buds review video. And you guys, I absolutely love it. And so I really wanted to do um, a whole chicken because lemon garlic um, is just a really great flavor. So I, so we're gonna try it out. I literally don't know how this is gonna work, but you can use the rotisserie seasoning from Pampered Chef. You can use a Kinder seasoning, whatever you have, whatever type of seasoning you wanna use, that's what you should use. So we're just gonna sprinkle liberally. And if your seasoning contains no salt, be sure to salt and pepper your bird well. Um, this one, 
does have salt in it. It does not have any pepper. So I'll probably go ahead and put a little bit of pepper on just because we like pepper in this house. So once you have it well seasoned, now we are gonna turn it over and do the same thing on the other side. So let's get this bird over. Oh, and it's so cute. It's a little heart, so nice. Um, I actually can't believe that this was so easy to do. Um, I don't know why I was intimidated to do it before, um, but because I decided to do the 12 skills series, I really wanted to push myself and do it because I know that it is something that I can really utilize um, on a monthly basis because I'm always finding chicken, um, especially whole chickens, because for whatever reason, maybe because we're all intimidated, um, people don't buy whole chickens as much as they used to in, um, you know, previous generations, maybe is the best way to put it, um, which I assume it's because it's a hassle. But you guys, spatchcocking this chicken was not a hassle if you have the right pair of scissors and you know what you're doing. Just two cuts and you've spatchcocked the chicken. That's pretty... Um, I'm surprised at how easy it was. Let's just put it that way. And then we're going to transfer this to the baking sheet. All right, so here we go. We're just gonna pick up Mr. Bird here or Mrs. Bird, whoever, and we're going to put it right onto our baking sheet like this. Now, if you wanted to cover your baking sheet with foil or something else, that's totally up to you. All right, and this is my thermometer. And what I'm going to do here is I am going to insert it into the largest part of the breast close to the bone and then, yep, it's registering at about 52 degrees so that whenever it goes in, I can monitor it, but I'm pretty sure it'll take about 40 minutes. So I'll see you back here in about 40 minutes to show you the results of this beautiful chicken. We'll be back. All right, welcome back and check it out. I took it out at 160 and yet we still have a rising temperature of about 177. Um, so it is definitely done and it's gonna be beautiful. I mean, check it out. It's so golden and crispy and oh my goodness. I will confess that I did go ahead and cover it about halfway through because the butter was browning it a little bit faster than I wanted it to brown. So I went ahead and covered it with foil and then let it finish out. So I'm gonna turn this around and we're gonna move it to this platter and get it cut up. Oh man, look at that beauty. Definitely save your pan drippings for some gravy if you need it. All right, and look at that. Isn't that pretty amazing? I am delightfully impressed with myself. Number one, for tackling a spatchcock, and number two, for having it turn out this beautiful. If you were doing this for a dinner party, you would just put it right on the platter and then you can carve it right on the table. Oh, and it took just over 40 minutes to come to temperature. So um, depending on what size of bird you have, of course, you're going to have to adjust, but this was about a five pound bird, a little bit smaller. So we're just going to get a slice in here and see how beautiful it is. Oh, yes. Oh, my goodness. So tender. That wing just popped right off. Easy to carve. So I want to get the whole breast off. And there we go. Whole breast comes right off. Oh, wow. And see that? See in there? That looks well done and delicious. And then because it's spatchcocked, you have your thigh and leg combo. And then we'll do the other side. Let's go ahead and take off this wing. And here is our other breast. Perfect, look at that. And then the other leg just comes right off and there you have it. That was pretty easy. I know dealing with a whole chicken, a little bit much, but that was pretty easy. And I feel like now knowing that I know how to spatchcock and it was actually easier than I thought it was, I think that is something that I will do more often. So I'm gonna taste what's left on this carcass over here. By the way, all of the meat left on the carcass is still edible. I mean, like I didn't do a very good job getting it all off, 
Um, so definitely clean off all of the meat before you put that into your freezer bag for stock later. If you haven't made stock before, I do have a video on that as well, but mmm, that's a good chicken. And in, it roasted in half the time that it would if it would have been a whole chicken. That's pretty impressive. Mmm. Even when you rotisserie the chicken, it takes over 45 minutes to get a whole chicken rotisseried. And usually five pounds is pushing the limit in my air fryer. So this is a really great skill to have. And I'm really glad that you joined me for this skill. And I hope that you will conquer your fears if you have them about spatchcocking a chicken. Cause honestly, that was way easier than I thought it would be. All right, you guys, well, did you enjoy that video? If you did, give it a like, share it with your friends and subscribe to my channel. I do videos several times a week and I'm always looking for the next adventure. And right now we're doing the 12 skills that a home cook should need for everyday cooking. And this is skill number two. Um, so catch that playlist and see the other skills that I believe are important to a home cook. But if you ever have any ideas for me, um, I always am reading the comments and I'm taking all of those ideas into consideration. So if you have any ideas, leave me a comment and you never know, your idea might be my next adventure. So that's it, you guys. We will see you on the next adventure. Bye.